Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and the last episode I was able to edit it, put it all together and it seemed to work rather well. So my confidence is a little higher that I'm going to be able to get back on the train and do some more editing and recording and recording and editing and all that good stuff. So that's good. Yesterday I did a stream um, with some folks that are also into Rosalind, Stefan, and I, I, I forgot her name already. I apologize in advance. That's a name, put the name right there. And uh, Stefan has done a lot of streaming with Rosalind and various parts of Rosalind. And it's been really cool to, you know, see him kind of do what I do, which is, you know, I don't mean this as a cut. And I think I even said that in the stream, it's like, doesn't get a lot of views, but he does something that he's really passionate about and he really likes talking about. And that's what I do in these videos as well. It's, I don't get a lot of people watching my stuff, but that's okay. I kind of like what I do and what I like talking about. And hopefully there's a couple people out there who get inspired to go, Hey, I want to look at this stuff. I want to do some, something like this. You know, I want to build tools or I want to build packages and make things for people to make their lives easier or whatever the case may be. So, so yeah, I've got a link in the description to the stream if you want to check it out. And it was basically building a tool to see where your methods are being intercepted. Interceptors is an experimental feature in C-sharp 12. So buyer beware, that stuff may not ever see the light of day in an official capacity, but it was still cool to work on something and Got, got to a point where we, we were able to see, well, here are all the interception points in your code. Now there's more that he's going to have to do in future streams, but it, it was at least cool to get to that point. So what I'm going to do right now is start working on a bug fix for rocks. Hopefully it's a bug fix. So this is it's one of those... Scenarios that, again, if you don't use the, the library extensively, then you're not going to see this. And that's another thing that I need to do is just see if I can find projects out there that use MLQ or and substitute and convert them over to using rocks just to see what things I run into or what doesn't work. So what happens is, is that there is a type with a member that's marked as obsolete, but it's not an error. It's a warning. And what happens, I'm sorry, so the, the, the attribute is said to be a warning, but treat as warnings is true. So that will turn into an error and rocks will generate rock 10 as a diagnostic. But even if you say, I want to suppress it, like you put it in as a no warn setting, rocks doesn't know about that. It doesn't know that you did that. And so it has no idea that, oh, this is okay. You're trying to suppress it, just like you'd be able to suppress it in this case if it was set to be a warning. So what I got to do is figure out a way to, because the problem is, is that even if you would suppress that, rock still won't generate the type. It needs to know that you've suppressed that specific, mem that error, that diagnostic. Now, I, I mentioned this on the Rosling Discord server to get some insight and some help. And it seems like it's going to be possible to do this. You use this analyzer config options provider, and then you can select from the global options a particular value and then parse it in. And somebody from the Microsoft team said, yeah, that's, that's what you need to do. So you do all this. I still do my syntax provider stuff, and then I combine them. And then in my output, I'll be able to collect and gather that value. And so I'll be able to tell, I, I actually won't be making these, these will be nullable, which means I didn't find it, so I don't know. Or it's going to be a value, and then I'll be able to say, ah, yes, you've actually set that to a no warning, or, you know, it's it's not an error, because it's an error by default. Now, one suggestion was just create the code, and the code itself that's generated is going to be an error because of the way the project settings are. I don't really particularly care for that because the order of the way these things happen is, oh boy, 
I just realized in talking through this, I might have a problem. So, oh yeah, that's right. No, 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 I don't. But I'm going to have to change something to make this work. Here's the thing. And I think I put this in the notes here. Yeah, I do, I do say change it slightly. Calm down, Jason. You actually figured out that you're going to have to do this. So what what's going to happen, because I got a notes here, I might as well just say it, bring this up just a little bit, is I still, when, I, when I'm creating these diagnostics, that's right while I'm creating the data model. And then if I have diagnostics in error, then I don't even create the data model. What I'm going to have to do is have a fallback case here and say, if the only error that I generate is a rock 10 error, still generate the data model. Now I can't figure out at the point in code yet, is it suppressed? It might be. So I have to still generate the data model. I won't generate all the code yet. In the create, create output, that's where I'm gonna say, okay, now for this particular data model, it did have a rock 10 issue. Did you suppress it? Is it not a error? Because if it's not an error or a warning, then go ahead and don't report that diagnostic and go off and create the code. That's okay. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of change here. So this might take, I, and I might not even be able to do this. This might just be something that I can't do. In that case, I may fall back to what the person from Microsoft suggested, which is just to generate the code, not do the rock 10 error, just go ahead and generate it and it will be an error because then what the developer can do is they can suppress the CS or CA error, whichever one it is, to say, yes, it's okay to, to do this and that may be able to then circumvent this because when I generate the code, it will no longer be an error to do that. Okay, so we've got some choices, but I wanna see if I can get this to work first. You know, and, and as I'm talking about it through, that may be the better choice is to just go ahead and generate, don't even look for obsolete things, but I, I just, I don't like the idea of, of generating code that I know is going to be at least initially considered to be a problem because my feeling is somebody is going to look at that and say, this library generates incorrect code. It shouldn't even do that, you know? So let's see where this goes. I have a branch up. I'm already in my obsolete generator tests. And so what I'm gonna try to do here is say, and I don't know, yeah, I have disabled this diagnostics. So like in a test like this, what I want this to do is actually create code, okay? So these cases, we just get diagnostics and it tells me don't do this. And at some point, I think down here, I I think I, what do I do in this test? Create when target as obsolete members as warnings, right? So this is just a warning. I don't know if I actually have a test in place that says configure treat warnings as errors as true, which is kind of what we want to do here. Um, but we want to have a test. How, how do I want to say this? We want to have a test that says public static async task create when target has obsolete members as warnings and build is error and build is error and rock 10 is suppressed, is disabled. We're gonna use the word disabled right here, async, okay? So we want that. And if I remember right, Do I say in here, hmm, I don't remember if I do or not. I thought I had something in here that said, that set the, the warnings to errors by default, or I figured out at some point that that's what it's doing, is it's it's got it as default. I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I knew at some point I had this figured out. 
Ah, yes, general diagnostic option. There we go. Never said any of this was easy, did I? So in the case, yeah, here we're, we're going to have rock 10. Yeah, that's showing up in these cases. Okay, so what we want to do is basically this, except we want to have this suppressed here. And so what should happen is that we actually get code and we should not get any diagnostics. So let's grab all this code and we're not gonna do like three, we'll just have one in play, okay? Did you copy? <laughs> I guess it takes a while for the editor to find that out. So we're just gonna have here, I wanna have a different name here. I am obsolete. I have obsolete members. Yeah, because it's not members. And then we'll just have an int get obsolete value, and that's it. We're not gonna have these other two here because I don't care about that. I just wanna have one here for now. Now, the thing is we should not have any of these, okay? Because we're gonna say here, we want to suppress rock 10 as well, okay? So then this should be, where is that down here? So I think, where's the error? There it is, okay. So can we just do that? Or is it gonna bark? Yeah, it's gonna bark. So we say, um, we want generated code and I'm just gonna put in here a bad value for now because we really do want generated code. This isn't what it should be, but we should eventually get code here. So then down here, if I grab, I have to change the name there. Ah, uh, yes, so we get, an empty enumerable, that's how you do it. Come on, Jason. What is this, amateur hour? <laughs> so then we need to have a comma here. There we go, okay. So that took a while, but that's okay. So let's go here and then let's run this and let's see what this does. Well, that took forever to run, <laughs> so, oh well. All right, so it fails, and it fails because it should say something like we didn't get any output, right? Yes, we expected output, but we don't get that because it should be an error. We shouldn't have any output, and we should actually have diagnostics. Okay, so but, but it is failing. So now what we want to do is see, do we actually pick up the fact? That's the first thing I want to do before I get too far into writing too much code is I wait a minute. No, that would be wrong. I mean, so let's run that again. Okay, so it failed again. And this time it still fails at the same thing, but this was right. We needed to actually pass that in there. Mock tests, I have obsolete members. Okay, so before I go too far, I'm gonna debug this. Am I in debug mode? Nope, let's be in debug mode. Let's be in debug mode. Jeez. Okay. And then I want to have in the rock create generator this. Because what I want to do is I want to change it far enough to see am I actually even getting the value in. Okay. So let's do some copy pasta. So I've got this options provider idea. So I'm going to do that first here. Okay. And what we want to do is say, you know what? No, that, that it's got to be tabs. Come on, come on, people. This is not not space hour. Okay. So we want to say, how would we do this? That would actually be the value. But then we want to say nullable, new nullable. of that. Okay, so, okay, name can be simplified. How can it be simplified? <laughs> you're saying it can be simplified, but you're not showing me how you're gonna simplify it. Oh, oh, okay, whatever, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. 
And now we should be able to see that, yes, it is a, okay, that's, that's what we wanted. Okay, cool. So we either find a value or we don't. Okay. Next thing we do is the thing we still do that. Okay, that's not changed. But then what we want is a combined provider, which is that, which is the syntax provider and option provider. Oh, this is just, yeah, let's, let's rename this syntax provider. Okay. And I have to also do this in the make. This is also needed on the make because you could say I want to make something and the same rule needs to apply. So I should put a note in here, FYI, this also needs to be done with a make comment there, okay? So we do that, we combine that, we get the combined provider, which combine, then we collect on that. That's gonna change what we're passing in here though, because now it's a create output where the source is a mock model left and a diagnostic severity right. An immutable array of mock model left, <laughs> left diagnostic severity right. Except that needs to be as a tuple, not tuple, tuple. Okay, and of course this now breaks everything in the world, but that's okay. So we wanna say for each mock and mocks, for each diagnostic and mock uh, left, right? Not right, left. <laughs> so when you try to do directions with people, which way do I go? It's the, you know, do I take a left here or do I take a right? Do I take a right here? Right, no, you say correct because then that's confusing the people. They think you mean you're taking a, you're just, you're confirming, do I take a left? Right, no, don't take a right, I meant, you're correct in what, so say correct. Anyway, okay, so what we wanna actually pull out of here is, let's call this output. And just take your time, yeah, there you go. Let's call that output. And we wanna say, well, actually, outputs. Okay, and then we wanna say here, output and outputs. And then we wanna say here, var mock is equal to out put dot left. And as we're doing there, we want to say that. Okay. So just a little bit of mock dot type and then that and then that. Okay. So this should not break anything in the sense that we are just adding in another part here. Okay. Now what is it saying here? Variable declaration can be destructed. You're right, it can be. And what can it be? Yeah, I don't wanna do that. No, thank you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is put here that, and then let's run this test and see what we get. All right, we are here. So if I go to my outputs, I have one, and it's null. Crap, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to see because I was hoping by saying disable diagnostics here that with rock 10 showing up, it would be like, nope, that's not what you want. Let's try this. Let's, yeah, let's actually go into the, to, to that part and see what happens when that gets called. All right, so we have provider.global options, config options. Keys, there's no keys. There's no backing, there's nothing. Well, that would explain it because there's nothing for it to get. Oh, fine, whatever, just, yeah, it's false. So that that's the problem is that the, it's not that this wouldn't work, it's just somehow, like, I, I don't know how to specify when I'm doing this test here with the general diagnostic options. And what's that test? Yeah, maybe somewhere in here is actually where I gotta do it. Right now I'm just saying 
this general diagnostic with general diagnostic options. So actually what I'm going to do at this point is, is stop. I'm going to do a little bit more digging in off camera. And in this video, I also, from a recording standpoint, I didn't do any pausing because I always have to do two now. And you know, if I pause and then I come back, I got to make sure they're aligned. But I also like pausing when I'm running because this is just, just taxing on my computer when I'm doing when I'm running the compiler and the debugger and everything. So, but this was another experiment just to get everything, my confidence level more and more higher so that this will work. I do want to use my other external camera at some point. I think that would be okay, except what I'm noticing too now is it's getting back into this mode where it's constantly auto-focusing. And I'm like, would you just please stop it? And I can't, figure out for the life of me where the setting is in Windows to say, don't autofocus a camera. Just let me focus it and then just say stop, leave it, because I don't move around when I do this. So I still have to use the native camera to the laptop, which works, but I, I don't think it looks quite as good. In any event, I'm going to dig into this a little bit more, see where I need to actually pass that value in to maybe get that to light up when I'm actually doing the generator. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.